I'm looking, for bubbles. I'm looking for bubbles in my ear, and it gets really bubbly. I'm like, oh man, I've got a fistula. <laughs> So yeah, uh, pneumouria, <laughs> polyuria, increase urine output, proteinuria. Okay, do you guys get the gist? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right, I'm going to keep on going, okay. All right, let's keep on going here. Then. Okay, what, pharma what pharmacopathology is present in the bladder? Freaking gigantic stone. <laughs> or Holy cow. It's a gobstopper. <laughs> He swallowed a jawbreaker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see this? You know what a golf stopper is. Golf don't, stopper. Play, don't play games. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's uh, it's obvious, right? All right. Identify the congenital anomaly present on this radiograph. Three kidneys, four kidneys. Yeah, yeah right? Four kidneys. What do you call it? Dual collecting system. Oh, a dual one. collecting system. So you have, you know, it's like, it, it's like, it's all good, Doc. I got four. Yeah, got two <laughs> Take here, one. Two here, two here, Who needs a two kidney? Here. I'll sell my kidney. <laughs> this person's good at sports, right? Yeah. Huh? This no, person's good at sports. This person's good at sports, I hope so. Okay, <laughs> donate. Donate a kidney for two. You freak. <laughs> <laughs> I just got twisted on my back. No, you're such a liar. Shut all right. Uh, which gender, uh, male or female, develops cystitis more frequently and why? Female. Female, because of why? Short ureter. Short ureter, okay. Urethra. Uh, urethra, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My ureters are fine and dandy, sir. <laughs> okay, identify the small triangular shaped object in the distal left ureter. This triangular shape. What is it? It's a stone. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look at this. You know, I mean, the there's, there's something going on here because you're not seeing a continuation of flow. And look how dilated it is. The whole, thing, up. Look the at whole this. thing is. Yeah. What is this called? The renal pelvis. Hydro. 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 And we also have hydro ureter. Hydro okay. <laughs> what are these? Stone stones. Oh, here's the bladder right here. This is the bladder. Is it in the bladder? No. Cyst? Poop. <laughs> <laughs> we call these fleas, basically just small blood vessels is what they are. And you're not looking at it like this, you're looking at the vessel like this. It's coming right at you. Yeah, coming at you. So those are blood vessels coming right at you. We call them fleas. Yeah, they're not really stones. So, I mean, you know they're not stones either because it's outside of the bladder. Is that normal? Is that something we need to know? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to spell it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, does this patient look like they've been cleaned up properly? Oh, right there, that's a lot of poop, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of poop in there, yeah. So this patient has not followed the, the prep, but this is one of the situations where the patient comes in with extreme flank pain through the ER, the doctor orders an emergency IVU. So no time to so prep. So we, we don't prep, we just shoot contrast in there and see what's going on. So they'll either come to the diagnostic radiology department or just go straight to CT. <coughs> Uh, we saw this earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah, we saw this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The other gob stop. Okay. One thing that I do want to get across is that when you guys are doing KUVs, it's called a KUV. So you should include kidneys, kidneys, ureters, and bladder. What? When bladder. doctor sees that, he's going to freak out. He's going to say, "Go do another one." You should be submitting throat. this if the bladder is cut off. Okay, because he's he or she's going to yell at you. So don't, 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 don't cut off the bladder. Uh, what is the specific term describing the renal cal uh, calculus seen on the patient's left? Specific term. Okay, you guys see what's going on here? First of all, see, what's this? It's some type of catheter, okay, that they're shooting contrast. What's it? Is it going the opposite way, right? It's a retrograde. It's a retrograde. Yeah, it's a retrograde uh, pilogram. So this tube is going in. The patient has to be knocked out. Then under anesthesia in the OR, you guys will be shooting these KUVs. Contrast is filling up the ureter. Um, it's not really um, continuous here, but we see it on both sides. What is that called? 
Hydronephrosis. Kind of. It's got horns. Someone says staghorn. Who says staghorn? Tatanka. Dunbar. Staghorn. Staghorn what? Tatanka. So it's basically it's basically a calculi that takes on the form of the renal pelvis. So the stone takes the form of the renal pelvis. It's petrified. Staghorn calculus. I don't know why they call it calculus. Because it's hard. <laughs> One extra credit point for you, sir. You know what? I yeah. Get yeah. <laughs> you say that every semester? Yeah. No, that was the first time I came up with it. Yeah. <laughs> I just was, thought about it. That was straight improv right there. <laughs> All right. Demonstrates prostate cancer. Uh, uh, demonstrates prostate cancer with metastasis to the spine and pelvis. All right, so this is the right postmortem image shows a defect along the base of the bladder. Okay, so there's something going on there. The floor of the bladder appears elevated and indented. So it demonstrates prostate cancer with metastasis to the spine. Okay, so there's some kind of tumor growth that's pushing up on the bladder, causing that outline. Some of these images are really dark. But can you guys see the indentation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's some kind of growth pushing up on that. Okay. Um, what are some conditions that can lead to hydronephrosis? Stones. Stones. What else? Okay, some kind of obstruction. King. King. Okay. Um, so enlarged renal pelvis here. So. Um, it says there's stones here, but I don't, is that, would you say these stones are related to the kidneys, the urinary system? I think it's outside of it. I think it's outside of it. So what else is located out here? It may be the gallbladder, but I mean, because the kidneys should sit below the liver, right? So this would mean that the kidneys on top or over the liver, but this, I, I don't know if that's, anyways, this is just some deducing I'm making. I don't know if that's actually stones in the, the urinary system or in the biliary ducts or the, the gallbladder. So, okay. <coughs> I, I don't know. Okay, so some conditions that leads to hydronephrosis includes, okay, we said stones, uh, tumors, kinking, twisting, uh, structural or congenital anomalies will also cause hydronephrosis, bless you. I have hiccups, okay. but thank you. Okay. Thank you for blessing me. Okay. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Rebecca. Secret message. <laughs> <laughs> Patient preparation for an IVE. What do we say? Can you fail? Similar to what? <laughs> it's a BE, okay. So, NPO for minimum eight hours. Uh, they can have a light evening meal prior to the procedure, uh, bowel cleansing, uh, NPO after midnight, again, minimum eight hours, enema in the morning, probably, again, it depends on the protocol of your hospital. Mm. And you want to empty your bladder before the procedure. So again, that's one more thing you gotta tell your patient before you begin the procedure. Take a leak. Yeah, you need to go to the bathroom, okay? We're we talking about number one or number two. Everything. Both of them. Everything. 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 Just empty, just if they need out. to. Yeah. Just empty out. Okay. You got to take an anxiety dump, go for it. Uh, radiographic, uh, radiographer's responsibility. The patient history includes clinical complaints, allergies. Again, so if you, if you have any allergies, include some medications. Okay, asthma, hay fever, da 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 da. Have you had this procedure done before? If so, what happened? Okay. So all the other things that we, we need to ask. What else do we need to ask? Are you pregnant? What was that one question I said pregnant. you needed to ask? Are you pregnant? Not only if they're pregnant, the diabetic, if they're on dialysis. That glucose. These are all good. Okay, what else? That glucose something. No, not glucose something. Metformin. 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 Oh. Yes, glucophage. Yeah. Yeah, so you need to ask all those glucophage. questions. Glucophage. Make that part of your diet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so we should school. be asking that with 
the small bell, all of the contrast ones, right? Anything where you use iodinated contrast intravascular. Intravas intravascular okay. Not if they're ingesting it, only okay. if it's intravascular. Okay. okay. So again, these are the, the blood chemistries that you need to check. So um, creatinine levels, um, bad if it's decreased, okay? BUN levels, bad if it's increased. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for decreased creatinine, increased BUN levels. And these are your normal levels in adults, okay? Did you remember did you what I said? So decreased creatinine level, increased BUN levels is a red flag. And going back to what you said earlier, Nick, if they don't, if they haven't had this done, we can't do the procedure until we get some kind of clearance. Okay. Yes. For those levels, is it still red flag if one was bad and the other one was okay? No. Sometimes one may be elevated for some reason or another. It's usually not indicative. They usually go hand in hand. Okay. Yeah. Um, but specifically, sometimes you may have an elevated BUN. Okay, very elevated to BUN, and you can have normal uh, creatinine levels. We will still do the procedure. Yeah. Again, it depends on the facility. Okay. So we most <laughs> facilities are more specific on creatinine levels than they are with BUN. But again, they go hand in hand. Okay. Um, management of non-insulin dependent diabetes include uh, this is glucophage or metformin. So I put the other names down here. This is just for your uh, for your own pleasure. Okay. So metformin is also called uh, amandamed, glucovans, diophan. Okay, you guys can go through that. Yes. Uh, check chart and ask patient if they are diabetic, if they're on glucophage, to be withheld 48 hours before and also 48 hours following the iodinated contrast media procedures. Again, glucophage may cause a condition uh, known as metabolic acidosis because contrast uh, prevents the elimination of this metformin that may cause acidosis. Okay? So the contrast prevents your body from eliminating the metformin, which can cause lactic acidosis. <coughs> so ask them, are you on metformin? Did you stop it? When did you stop it? Okay, um, Rady Ruffer's responsibility again patient history, selection and preparation of contrast media, read the label three times, okay, and you're going to be the one who is going to empty the contrast into a syringe. Depending on your facility, some do 20 cc's, others do 40, some do 50. So again, up to the doctor and how much contrast you want to give the patient. But you need to read the label three times. Make sure you have the correct contrast, the correct dose, expiration date, lot numbers. These are all things that you need to put in the patient's chart. Okay. Where are we are now? Okay. Uh, preparation for possible reaction. So, fully stocked emergency cart, epi. Okay. Make sure epi is available. Uh, be have your CP uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation equipment available. Oxygen is, uh, section is also available. Um, <laughs> where are emergency cars usually found? In place for contrast studies. Okay, again, usually in rooms where they perform IV contrast procedures, yes. All right. Okay, here's a tomo tomographic room, okay. All right, so let's, let's start over here. So the stuff that you need to perform an IV, basic things, syringe, needle, tourniquet, alcohol, alcohol soy, okay, alcohol wipes. So those are your basic necessities. Uh, what else? Band-aid, gauze, contrast. So everything that you have here on the table yeah, are, basin. are basically what you need. The room that you're also going to be performing these procedures in is a special type of tomographic room. Um, have you guys been in a room that has tomographic capabilities? Is it like a nuclear mitt? I mean, where no, 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 okay. Tomographic, okay, so this is the way it works. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and do this now. I'm gonna swallow my pill. <laughs> it takes slices, right? Like. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, here's your x-ray tube, okay? Here is the support of the x-ray tube. And then down here, the x-ray tube is gonna be locked up on a set of tracks, okay? So the tube, the, this apparatus, go back over here. Okay, so there's the tube and then you've got the bar, okay, the support, the support beam for the, for the x-ray tube. And down here on the very bottom of the support beam is going to be sitting on a track. Okay, that's gonna be so far. That's why I draw, drew wheels on my picture. All right, now what's gonna happen here is when you're doing a tomogram, you're gonna set the fulcrum or the center point, okay? So you'll be the one setting the level of your fulcrum, fulcrum point. So let's just say, for example, I set my fulcrum point at, and you're gonna have the ability to adjust it to the centimeter or millimeter. So let's just say, again, I'm just gonna call this 30 centimeters. Okay? You can adjust the level of this point because this point is going to be the point of rotation. When you're doing a tomogram, start position is over here. Okay, So it starts over here and your table is going to be right here. This is your table. Okay, So tube is over here, your bucky Okay, your Bucky that's gonna have your detector or your image receptor or whatever is gonna be on the opposite end. So tube is now over here, Bucky is over here. You guys follow me so far? Mm -hmm. Now what happens is when you make an exposure, this tube is going to swing on the other side. So now during exposure, it's gonna swing this way. And as it's swinging, the bucky's also moving, okay? So it's going to sweep, this is going to sweep on the opposite end. So what's happening here is that when you're taking a tomogram, anything that's above or below this fulcrum, fulcrum point, bless, bless you. you. Anything that's above or below that fulcrum point will be blurred out. And the area that you selected your fulcrum point will be in focus. So we're using motion here to blur out anatomy on the top and below the area of interest of the kidney that we are looking at. I'm trying not to end my sentence with the preposition, but I had to. Okay. So this is what happens. So you you set up the tube. It starts here. You make an exposure. Beep. And exposure is probably going to be like anywhere between like a half a second to maybe a second and a half. So it's going to go beep. That's swinging. This is moving. So we're creating motion. So again, anything above and below that level that you chose will be blurred out, and only this area here that you selected will be will be in focus. That's what a tomogram is. So we're literally taking images in slices. And we're, and we're selecting the level of the slice that we want. Why you so is this the MRI then? Or huh? CT? Why can't we use CT? CT? Well, this is what I was saying. What? Remember what I said? No. So we, we, were, we did all this in radiology, diagnostic radiology, and they said, you know what? We can get better diagnosis with CT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they went to CT, and now all these studies are being done that the patients are just getting too much radiation. Too Do much all the for this. Have one of these? They should. Do ours? Are you guys seeing them? They may look like they're just regular X-ray tubes, and all you got to do is just stick in a uh, a pole to attach the bucky to this apparatus right here to create a fulcrum. It's just any regular old X-ray room. The only thing is it has uh, tomo capabilities. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. Fast. Yeah. Okay, any questions? <laughs> Did you survive? I need my blood pressure. Check yeah. again? Yeah.
Does this make sense though? Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so this is a tomo uh, this is a tomographic unit. All right, so equipment that we need. In your slides, what I did was I took crash card, because it was down here somewhere, and I put it in the <coughs> very top, because this is the most important thing that you need in the room is a crash card, okay? So I made that the priority. I just switched orders, I just brought it up here. So crash card, uh, contrast media syringe, we said uh, sterile needles, he has a good You guys know this guy? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, did you get a chance to go to the back room, Gary? Uh, to the supply room? Yeah. You did? Did they let you in? Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. She's still there? She said she was leaving. Okay. All right. Uh, so we're going to be covering this, covering this again later on uh, with Mr. Benoit's lecture. Um, so sterile needles, alcohol wipes, tourniquet, emesis basin. Okay, why do we need emesis basin? In case they throw up. In case they throw up, right? Okay. Lead markers. You guys have all your all your lead markers? Okay. We also need an additional type of lead markers here. These are gonna be the time markers like we have in small bowel. Mr. Benoya, do you guys do tomograms in your uh, facility? Yes. Yes. The Yes. Okay. There you go. Go check it out. See, like All right. It. Go, go play Perfect. with your fulcrum. Okay. So you should have at least one in your department. It, it's it's kind of, you, you can't tell because it's very inconspicuous. It just looks like a regular x-ray unit, but it does have capabilities of that tube to, to swing. <laughs> it sounds okay. like it. Um, your rhetoric, your rhetoric compression device, and also cold towels and maybe warm towels in case you have and extravasation, okay? Uh, the towel is also there to help them wipe them out if they get nauseous and they start foaming and all oh. that stuff. Okay. Uh, Ureteric compression is a method to enhance filling of the pelvic, pelvic colcele uh, system. <laughs> what area are we talking about there? The renal pelvis. <laughs> okay, the renal pelvis, okay? So we're looking at the renal pelvis. So, We'll, we'll cover this later on, but there is a compression device that is placed here um, where the bladder and the ureter is at UV junction. It presses a, uh, puts a compression on that area to prevent any of the contrast spilling or, um, spilling or going into the bladder. So it keeps everything up here, okay? Because we don't want to go into the bladder. We want to focus up on this area right here, okay? The pelvic col seal. Um, ure ureteric compression, uh, the correct placement of the inflated paddles are as so. Um, this is still on your slides, right? You have this, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So you're gonna take these paddles and you're gonna place it right at the level of the iliac crest and then just medial to the as is. Medial to the as is, okay? So bottom of the as is and medial to the as is is where you're gonna place this device, you're gonna pump it up, increase the compression, and we're going to keep the contrast up in the upper area of the urinary system, okay? Uh, there are six <laughs> contraindications why we wouldn't use this. Uh, first one is possible stones, because the effects of the compression may give the imp uh, impression that there is a stone in that ureter, okay? So if they have possible stones, we're not going to do that. An abdominal mass may appear the same radiographically as the compression device. Because you are compressing the abdomen, we don't want to add any additional pressure in, an, uh, in that area, especially if they have an aortic aneurysm because you can cause a rupture. Okay? Uh, recent abdominal surgery, severe abdominal pain, and also abdominal trauma. One, two, three, four, five, six, so six. Six reasons why you wouldn't use the compression device. Okay, um, Trendelenburg position is also used as an alternate, so if you do have a contraindication, we can also perform it this way by putting them in a Trendelenburg position. That will keep the contrast flowing back up into the upper, upper region. All right, 
So your basic IBU, basic routines for an intravenous urogram. So after you've done your history, you get your patient on the table, what is the very first thing that we need to do? Yeah. Remember what we're saying, anytime you do a contrast procedure, scout. what are you going to do? Scout in. You're going to take a scout. Okay? So the scout is going to be a KUB. Okay, you guys know what a KUB is, right? It's just a re regular abdominal x-ray on a large image receptor. And then you're also going to do a TOMO scout. The TOMO scout is trying to make sure that you're at the correct level of the kidneys so you can get a good radiographic uh, representation of it. Um, injection, no time at the beginning of the injection. Some sample imaging routines includes a one minute nephrogram. A nephrogram <coughs> is basically, what's the neph? Kidneys. kidneys. You know, but what part of the kidneys? The pelvis, the renal pelvis. Okay. This, this the nephron. Right here. Okay. The very first part of the collection system is the nephrons. So we want to see the nephrons, the initial point in which those nephrons start, start to light up with the contrast. So we want to get this done within the first minute. This is known as a nephrogram, which is just plain film. If you are going to use the sweeping motion of your x-ray tube, that's called a nephrotomogram. Okay. So we'll do a one-minute nephrogram or one-minute nephrotomogram. And again, in determining the level of that fulcrum, you actually have to do some measurements. So to get that level of that fulcrum, the centering point, you're going to measure the patient from front to back with the calipers, and you're going to take that thickness and divide it by three. Okay? Divide it by three because where are the kidneys located? Towards the back. So one, two, three. So when you divide it by three, it's gonna take you at the level of the, the kidneys. See, one, two, three. So we're gonna take, um, divide it by three, and that should take you to the level of the kidneys. So we'll take the scalp film, show that to the doctor, are you okay with this image? And they'll say, you know what, start off maybe one centimeter higher or one centimeter slower. They'll tell you exactly if we want to level up or down. Okay? So you're going to do, again, sample imaging, a scout, one minute nephrogram, then you're going to do five minute APs, a 15 minute AP, and then possibly a 20 minute posterior obliques, and then a post void. How many more slides? A lot. You guys want to do a break? No, okay, let's keep on going, okay. So documentation, starting time of injection, type and amount of contrast media being injected, the site of injection, and also date and sign the paperwork. Do we need a consent form? Yes. Okay, anytime you're doing some type of intravenous procedure, you need to do a consent form. What is a consent uh, form for? Cover your ass. Yeah, well, yeah, cover it, yeah, CYA. But a consent form is that you are providing the patient with enough information so that they can make a decision, an educated decision, about the procedure that they're going to have. The consent form does eliminate any type of liabilities, and this is where the doctor, the doctor should be present for the consent form. This is where the doctor is going to present the, uh, the benefits as well as the risks of having this procedure done. Okay, so the doctor will say, uh, you're gonna get a warm feeling throughout your mouth, you may get, I'm sorry, throughout your mouth, a metallic taste in your mouth, a warm feeling throughout your body, um, you may get a flush feeling, um, anything more than that, you gotta let us know, but also, there's a chance of you having a reaction, and they'll, they'll talk about the different reactions. One of, out of every, uh, one of every 100 something will have a minor, one of something something will have moderate and then he'll say well and then you're going to have those that are uh, will have a severe reaction or even death it's all going to be part of the patient uh, uh, informed consent making sure that they understand what they're having done and then they'll say okay do you still want to have this done yeah. and then they sign <laughs> off okay and it's usually signed with a witness you being the witness so the doctor signs it the patient signs it and then you may sign it 
Do not ever leave the patient alone. The radiologist sh should remain within immediate reach for five minutes. Okay, remember the latent response, so there is a possibility of a latent response, so uh, make sure that the doctor is nearby. Okay, if it's more than an hour, make sure that they are easily reached uh, after an hour. But if you do have a response, you want to contact help immediately. All right, so here are the variations of an IVU. Let's just go ahead and talk about the different positions. So your basic positions for an IVU includes an AP, scalp, the series, and then the nephrograms, and uh, the obliques. So this I added here so there is no confusion because the information is kind of all over the place. First thing that you're going to do, okay, first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take a scalp. This is your scalp KUV. What is your other scalp? Tomo. Okay, it's going to be either a, a, a nef, nephrogram minus the contrast or the nephrotomogram minus the contrast, but those will be your scalp of just the kidneys. So it's generally two scalps, one KUV and a one of just the kidneys. I'll talk about the position of 